Welcome to episode four of the podcast where I discuss zombie viruses or a head cold where I thought I had a virus and was dying. Also, Rob and John talk about Virginia and all of the scary stuff that's going on over there with different Senate bills. And we get into active shooters a little bit. This will be just part one in an intro and we'll continue part two in the next podcast. It's John McCreary, it's Protect You Radio. I got Rob Campbell, the walking encyclopedia, in the studio with me again. I don't know how active he's going to be tonight. He's looking a little tired. Uh, <laughs> my Monday's are a little rough on me. Poor guy gets up at four in the morning and still comes in here and tries to keep me kind of organized to see what I'm going to be up to and, and makes it happen. So it's a beautiful thing. Um, thanks again for showing up and, and tuning us in. It should be another fun night. I, uh, I'm fighting a little bit of cold here, so it might get a little ugly, and I apologize. Um, I think everyone's fighting this crud. It's been a week like that. My wife was kind of getting over it. I sent her off to Florida so she wouldn't infect me, and it didn't seem to work. She's still infected. But heading back tonight, I'm excited to see the family again, so it'll be fun having everyone back together. Now, I did spend a lot of time this week since I'm off work watching zombie movies. I <laughs> seem to be addicted to zombie movies. I had no idea. Um, I knew I liked them. But there are so many genres of zombie movies. I had no idea that there were comedy zombies or zomb- some zomb- comedies, whatever the heck they're called. Who <laughs> knew? I've zombies, learned a lot. Huh? Yeah, who knew that you could make so many different weapons to kill zombies? Um, pretty much improvised weapons central. Um, I'm amazed at how many people are dumb in zombie movies, but I guess that's all horror movies. <laughs> and uh, we have fun with it. But I'm pretty sure from watching all the zombie movies, I caught the zombie plague. And that's what's going on in my head. Um, maybe it's psychosomatic. Is that the right word? Psychosomatic? <laughs> yeah, when you, when you think you got something, but you really don't. Yeah, I think I, I think I actually caught a zombie plague. So <laughs> who knew? Yeah, it's it's kind of running out of my ears just and my in, nose. Just in time for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a Merry Christmas in our house with all the crap floating around our house. So, mm. <laughs> Sorry, a little water break there to keep me A little me smooth. Uh, Christmas cheer will straighten that. Uh... Absolutely. So another great week. Um, welcome to Protect You Radio. Uh, again, John McCreary and Rob Campbell tonight. Um, you know, I've got some concealed carry class stuff coming up too. So if you're interested in a concealed carry class, January 11th in Chardon, Ohio, um, you can check out the website OhioPPT.com. That is a website where you can sign up for classes. Um, running a special, uh, two or more people, $45 each. So if you get online before September 26, you get a heck of a deal. I know a lot of people are running, you know, a little bit more expensive than that, and I usually do too, but I'm feeling cheery. I want to get people to classes. <laughs> I want people to get trained. I think, you know, now now is as good a time as any. People are putting us off, and I hear it all the time. You know, I, I've always been meant to br- <laughs> come take a class. I was like, when did this go into law? 2004, and it's 2019. I'm glad to hear people are finally getting to it. Um, I'm getting a lot of those calls. <laughs> like, yeah, I really think it's time. Yeah, probably as good a time as any, so jump on board with that. Again, John McCreary, OhioPPT.com. At least, at least now they're sure it's here to stay. That's that's exactly it. Let's hope. Not a, it's no longer a passing fad. It's it's, here it's to not. Stay. It's not so good. And might, Rob, need, might need it with what's going on in parts of the country. I, I, baffling, Rob. Don't you guys have a class coming up too? Uh, yes, I do, and I charge a lot more, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. No, I, no, and believe me, guys, this is not a competition, and I like, and, and even though we all charge different amounts, and I'm not going to give amounts for robbing them, but they do have a class coming up. I think it's in, is it January, Rob? Yeah, January 4th, we're doing one in, uh, in the Ravana area. So. Yeah, so it, again, completely separate areas, guys, and maybe take two classes. Crazy concept. I know not everyone can get to certain places on certain dates. Um, but, yeah, check it out because Rob and Amanda teach a heck of a class. Yeah, I charge more, but you get a lot from my class. You get way more from Rob and Amanda's class, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I've, 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 had a, I've had the pleasure of sitting in some of their classes that they teach uh, with women in the outdoors, and I, I, you know, I listen even though it looks like I'm kind of doing work around you know, them. The other day we were at, me and, me and Amanda and Mike were at the range um, doing some stuff, and Amanda got a brand new pistol, so we were doing some quick draw stuff and that, and she posted a video online of uh, doing a with, with buzzer, draw, and shoot six shots at three different targets, and I think it's 3.66 seconds or something like that total. I watched her video, and she, um, coming out of the holster, the first shot was 1.5 seconds, I believe, which, let me tell you guys, in Northeast Ohio, when you're wearing probably thermal underwear and a parka and probably mittens, 1.5 to a first shot um, with a new gun, that's a heck of a draw <laughs> and get to a first shot. So that I give her credit. I was watching that and I was like, Whoa. I, know, I watched that and it was 
amazingly smooth, and, and, and you learn a lot from. We time ourselves and we videotape ourselves because you you don't know what you're doing unless you can see yourself. I mean, and sometimes I look like a spider in a blender when I'm drawing. <laughs> I mean, I am all spread out doing all kinds of goofy stuff, but uh, I can hit what I'm shooting at. So what? <laughs> you mean you? Yeah. You know what, you guys? I know some people get too wrapped up on the the quick draw. It is important you get to the gun, you get the gun out quickly. But if you don't do it accurately, I don't care how freaking fast you are. Right. If you're not I mean, hitting what you're shooting you want, at. You want to make sure that first one and two shots is, is actually doing the job. So Absolutely. that you don't have to look for hiding places, reload, um, any of that kind of stuff. You, yeah, I know we learned to shoot from cover and stuff, but there are times there's not cover. There's not concealment. <laughs> there's times you are out stark naked, just you, right, the so person you, trying to whack you in the noggin, you and your gun. You and dig one eye out with your thumb and shoot with the other hand and hope for the best. Absolutely. I, I cannot <laughs> emphasize that. I know we, we a lot of ranges limit us. We have to go and we sit at the range and we, we came and draw from a holster. And the gun's on the table. Uh, that is limiting, and that will not be you what the, the fight looks is, like. Is I get a lot of people who don't handle a gun a lot. And sometimes they just need the skill of picking it off a table and getting their hand on it the same way every time. Absolutely. It's, it's so funny. I, I give them homework. I'll say, take your gun home, make sure it's empty, lay it down on the kitchen table, and every time you come into the kitchen, pick it up and shoot the trash can with the dry fire. And uh, you get a chance to get your hand on the gun and get used to the way that it feels. You want to be able, when you grab the gun, to be able to shoot all of its shots without having to fumble for a new grip or... Something. I mean, the last thing you want to do is throw it in the air and try to catch it again to, to get a new grip on it or whatever you want. That right there is priceless. I mean, you people got double what they paid for the show tonight just in that little bit of tidbit. But, I mean, it, it's like when you're drawing your gun, everything happens as you put your hand on it. So you got to make sure you have a good, sturdy grip at that point because when you pull it out, if you drop it, what, I, I see it all the time. Can't call time out. I, I need to get my gun back. It's a you got to uh, you got to run with your brung. So it's a it's a way. Me and Mike, we always play. If if you pull the gun out and and you got a funky grip, you got to shoot that way anyhow. As long as it's not dangerous for me or him, we we got to run with. And if you pull it out and all of a sudden you got a malfunction, you need to start using it as a hammer. So you're piling on and. Start <laughs> oh, absolutely! And I can't tell you how many force of force on force drills I've seen people lose their gun. Um, it malfunctions. Uh, force and on it, force is one of the most important things that you can do. If you teach yourself to, oh, time out or uh, let's do it over again, there's no do-overs when somebody's uh, menacing you. So you need to be able to do whatever you got with whatever you end up with at the end. So if it, if it comes out and fires one shot, you either have to be able to clear it or you have to be able to use it as a hammer while you're beating your way to success and getting their gun. Best darn hammer ever, <laughs> ever. Um, I'm a big fan of, um, I used to teach what was called zero to five when I was working with Suarez International. And one of the funnest drills I think we ever did was literally practicing a foul draw where it got stuck in your shirt. We would shoot through the shirt and then hand the gun off to the other hand and keep shooting. People were like, what is wrong with you? It's like nothing. I said, this is the reality. One time. <laughs> you we can't. Were doing a, we were doing a drill and you're supposed to draw, turn, and engage the target. Well, I just drew my drew my gun, leaned over, and shot out the back. <laughs> so my time was excellent, but I caught my coat on fire, and it burned a big groove up the middle of the back of my this plastic coat I had. Yep. So it was like later in the day, I was trying to figure out what happened to my coat, <laughs> and there, I swear, I, my forty caliber Walther shot a, ate a big hole in the back of my. I can't tell you how many, how many things like that I've seen or done, and people don't get it. They're like, "What? Well, why would you? How did you shoot your range bag?" Well, we were using it as a <laughs> things, things, you know, happen. things happen. You're propped it up, and the uh, you know the break you shoot put on the, there was your range bags are easy. It's when you shoot the car to try to explain to the wife how you got a big bullet hole in the door of the car. Yeah, I was using my bag as a, my bag and my coat as a support. One time, I blew my coat up. Um, you know, the I, I'm like you, Rob. I burned the underside of my arm from shooting in retention, drawing across the body, <laughs> and using the elbow as kind of a deflector. 
and the shot, probably like I didn't shoot myself in the elbow, quite frankly, but there was a nice burn underneath my arm. I was like, well, that's going to leave a mark for a day or two. So, yeah, those are always fun to come home and explain to your wife what exactly happened today. <laughs> and then coming out of force on force when you're using airsoft guns, and she looked at me like, were you attacked by bees? <laughs> you know, we've got hundreds of little welts all over me. Right. She's like, what is wrong with you? What, you really well, do this for fun? And me and Mike use a, uh, he has like a big pad for MMA fighting. So one of us will hold the pad while the other one beats the crap out of them. And then you have to back off and draw your pistol and, and make a couple of hits or something. If you've so not done that and realize how much it will gas you so out. Yeah, you're, you're, you're breathing like a freight train. Your eyes don't focus and everything. And all yeah. of a sudden you have to go from the uh, this beating and clawing to the fine motor skills of running the controls on your pistol without just shooting shots that you didn't want to have happen. So. Yeah, I've had people tell me, hey, John, why don't you run before you shoot, or why don't you do a couple push-ups before you shoot? I've done that stuff, and honestly, I don't find that it gasses me or it doesn't affect me the same way as if I'm entangled with somebody like you guys do with the pad, Rob. I find it's a much different... Back in um, the old days, the Army would make you... Uh, they, shot, they shot 200 yards, so you stood up, shot 200 yards, and then you double time down, set the target back up, double time back, and then you shot 200 yards again. So after you've done that three or four times, you got a couple thousand yards on you yeah. running. It, it started making you breathe a little funny and shoot in different spots. <laughs> it does. I really The breathing on that is, is really tough to build back or, or, or control it, when you, especially if you get back into prone even, and you're trying to relax and breathe. That's a tough... Um, but you know, I still find that to be even different than a quick aerobic striking and entangled type situation. The thing we, we find is a lot of people, when you get to where you're concentrating, especially in a fight, you forget to breathe. <laughs> and, and, and that affects you because, you, like you say, you, you run out of gas and then all of a sudden you're suffocating and it was, it's your own fault because you, you just stop breathing. So you need to think about that and practice that. But it was funny because the other day on the radio we had uh, Pastor Sean, Sean Moon on and I think he was trying to get about a 45-minute show in in about 12 minutes. And so he was really, really going, and he was talking so fast that I stopped breathing, and I realized in a couple of minutes that I was in distress just from the fact that he was going so fast that I'd stopped breathing to listen to him. I thought I heard a thump when I was listening. That was you falling out of your chair from passing out, wasn't it? I was like, what was that loud thump? Oh, Rob went down. Who knew? But it was, it was just funny. He was so he was trying to go so get so much stuff packed into that show that it was. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and you don't realize you're doing it, and you, and you you find yourself when you when you get gas and you're scared, you tend to start doing things like that. You you get ramped of, up when you when you start concentrating on one thing, you you stop doing other things. You absolutely know? do. People don't understand how hard it is to control your breathing under stress, <laughs> and sometimes, honestly, just holding your breath might be the best bet when till that's over in three seconds. But if you're in a prolonged situation, if you do not understand how to breathe and understand how to control that, you will quickly gas out and find yourself either passed out, choked out, or just flat out, you can't fight anymore. It's, it's an amazing right. how fast it happens. So, and, 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 it's, and it's self-inflicted. You did it to yourself. Yeah, I, <laughs> and the adrenaline, the adrenaline that courses through your body in those situations is amazing. I, you know, I've worked as a bouncer, and there are times where I literally walked into a situation and felt the adrenaline start to flow beforehand, and my body was exhausted by the time the fight was over because and, and they weren't long fights usually, you know, 10, 15 seconds, but my body hurt. And I was gassed just because I let the adrenaline take over. I stopped breathing. And, yeah, and if you're in a shooting situation, your accuracy and everything else goes to pot in that situation. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's terrifying. So, anyways, those are the kind of things we like to talk about here on this show. Um, it is about self-defense. It is about things going on. A little politics tonight, too. Um, I, I, I probably have beaten this to death, but I'm not going to let it go. Yes, Virginia, there is a Second Amendment. I am back on Virginia this week because I keep reading stuff. And it, it, Virginia is the gift that keeps giving to podcasts and to you know, Second Amendment is, issues. The this, this Sanctuary City stuff is uh, it's kind of unwritten rules, so nobody knows what the final outcome is going to be. But more and more places are, are designating themselves Sanctuary City, Sanctuary Counties, whatever. I've seen uh, in Maine now some of those uh, counties up there had designated themselves as a sanctuary county. Yeah, it's spreading across the country. I know Colorado and, and some other places were into it before, even back as far as 2010. Right. I, I think they said there was about 290 different places, different counties or something before Virginia started doing any of their stuff. Because uh, New Mexico had a big rush where yep. a lot of their counties had 
piled on. Yeah, I think Colorado went through a big thing there for a while, too, where they, they kind of piled on. Same thing. They're like, hey, this is getting serious, and we don't want to give up these rights. I And like Rob said, the sanctuary cities don't have any legal standing, but I read a great piece the other day, and I'm blanking on who wrote this. I'm going to have to go back and look at it. Um, and it may have even been on the Cato Institute. I forget. Um, a gentleman said it really, the sanctuary cities really push two issues. It's either one, the government will have to react and back people down, or two, they will have to decide to let things go and let local jurisdiction decide whether they're going to enforce those laws. You know, some of it, it's a double edged sword also. Sure because is. Because some of the laws that they're trying to pass all of a sudden take make their sanctuary cities for the illegal aliens illegal. At the same time, they're they're trying to stop the the sanctuary cities from the Second Amendment. So. Well, I laugh when you looked at some of that stuff where they were trying to keep people from um, getting together as groups and train. Hey, Antifa, guess what? Antifa, whatever you want to call yourself this week, that's going to screw you guys. You know, that's coming out of the left. Depends on how fast you say it. Is <laughs> <laughs> I can call it a couple other things, but I'll be nice tonight. Um, but yeah, that you know, they're they're pushing some of these laws to take stuff away from guys on the right. And gun owners, but guess what? That's going to affect their little left-wing, little right, so, terrorist so it, organizations. With the Antifa, and also, like I say, is they have a sanctuary city or whatever, with this where they're not allowing ICE in or whatever. Uh, that it takes that away from them too. So. And I believe Virginia went with that. I think Northam actually put that into place there. I think they are a sanctuary haven for. Right, I don't know what they actually put into place yet. I don't think a lot right now. I don't know exactly when the new. Democratic powerhouse takes January, in, yeah, sometime in so January. Sometime in January. So right now, all this stuff is preemptive. They're just saying, "This is what we're going to do. This is yeah. what we're going to do." Well, it's so pre-filed, it's, it's so it literally, when the clock too, turns, yeah, it's two loud mouths right now running their mouth. But eventually, something's going to happen, and it'll end up in court or something. But uh, so they are planning a big rally at the Capitol, um, <clears throat> I believe, sometime in January. And this, you know, <laughs> this shows you the short-sightedness of some of the people in Virginia's um, legislature. So the incoming speaker, um, I think it's Eileen Filler-Corn, if I remember correctly, she has decided that they're going to discuss whether to ban guns at the Capitol as a quick thing, because you can already carry guns in the Capitol building in Virginia, and you can carry guns on Capitol grounds in Virginia. So in her short-sightedness, she has decided that they're going to discuss how they can ban guns during this rally. Did you did you miss the point of why the rally is coming? <laughs> what what are, you, what are you not understanding that the rally is about having guns and Second Amendment rights and rights that are already in Virginia? So now you're going to turn around to a rally that's there for Second Amendment rights and you're going to try to limit their rights even further. You have completely missed. You are tone deaf. You are listening to people in your inner circle and you've lost your mind because people are there for a reason to protest and you're going to take that away from them. A further step that's nuts so again politicians tend not to listen to their constituencies and i heard you guys talking about this earlier rob i think it was from the show on sunday um you know where were these people when it came time to vote nobody turned out they didn't even run certain um races they the republicans didn't even put people up right, there was 20, 23 counties that did not even have a republican challenger to the thing so, it's so can't complain that much now i'm glad people are stepping up but where the hell were you back in november <laughs> when these elections were going on. Right, and, and if you look at it, though, I mean, now they they have 20,000 patriots show up. At least now they're, they're starting to pay attention. And, and that's good because other places also are starting to pay attention. I see that uh, New Jersey is starting to do something. Kentucky, they're starting to get off the couch and do something. Um, once they uh, finally get us all up and, and riled up, we may... Uh, yeah, and you're seeing... Uh, militias from other states who have agreed to come in and provide security during this rally. So you're going to have police presence, you're going to have militia presence, you're going to have gun rights advocates, you're going to have, I, I, I'm going to bet that your Antifa guys are probably going to show up at some point. And talk about a hot mess. If people tend to overreact in any way, I, I hope everyone keeps it calm. Um, you know, the the Virginia uh, Citizens Defense League is, is the group kind of putting these together, and they're the ones who've been helping out with the sanctuary city stuff. Um, and they, you know, they've even gone so far as to email their groups or their their um, base, basically saying, "Hey, if you're going to do this, show up to the rally, but don't bring long guns." Which usually, when you see these things, it's people. Toting long guns out in the open and stuff, and yeah, you have that right. 
um, and I'll probably get slapped for this a little bit, you guys, but even, even this group organizing this is saying, hey, leave the long guns at home this time because here's what happens with this. You walk into these protests, and guess what the media is immediately going to latch onto? The guy carrying the long gun. Okay, it's gonna, you're going to lose the message of the the bigger message of the rights and why you're there and discussing the gun rights, um, the long guns. Yeah, I know I shouldn't be slapping people down, but if you're going to lose the message because of what you want to portray, uh, because you carried a long gun, careful, you guys. Just you know, think through the message. Think what's going to get out there. Is that going to take away from um, what they're trying to do and what message you're trying to get out there? So. Yeah, be careful. Um, and on the other side of this thing, you guys, this <clears throat> sometimes the the social media stuff gets a little crazy. Be careful where you're getting your sources for social media. If you suddenly get a, a what's going to look like a powder keg, possibly of all these people together in one place, and you got a bunch of people who disagree with them, and suddenly somebody jumps on social media and starts talking about they've cut off electricity, you better make sure that you know who that source is and what kind of crap they're talking about. Um, you know, during the, um, oh, was it Whiskey Warrior 556, that little standoff that happened here about a month right, ago. Up in New York. Yeah, so this guy, um, you know, everyone was online talking about, hey, this guy, it's, you know, it's a red flag law, and they're coming to take his guns. Well, I think if you got further into that story, they were really coming for him for some domestic violence issues and some other things that had been prior um, and maybe even had some, um, arrest warrants out for him previously that quickly turned into hey we need to defend this guy and, and I will bet I did not see stories but I will bet there were armed people in the area ready to defend this guy and <laughs> that could have turned ugly really quick um, and I don't know that, that we got all the all the pieces parts of that of story it, some of it though is when there's a call to arms it's it's a split second decision. There's no, uh, yes. there's no time to go on Wikipedia and see if you what the what the base says or what the... I agree, Rob. <laughs> you just, just vet your sources, you guys. If you want to be in the areas when these things are happening, make sure you understand because things like that turn ugly quick. On the other side, be there and defend your rights. Absolutely stand up for what you believe in and stuff. Um, but there are people out there... So when this whole Virginia thing kicked off and started out, um, there's a guy out there named Hal Turner who's kind of a... Um, you know, the guy's gone so far as to s deny the Holocaust. He's kind of a conspiracy theory guy. And, and I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theory guy because they turn out to be <laughs> true sometimes. But he started launching a bunch of stuff about how they'd cut off, they're going to cut off electricity. And this is what Northam is going to do. And, and that took off. People were, you know, reposting it. And, and well, as far as we could tell, it never happened or was going you, to happen. If you look when they uh, were chasing the Boston bombers around. Yeah. They shut off the uh, cell phones. They shut off uh, the, the... And they can. They absolutely can. Um, and is that terrifying? Yes. It, what Did, did so it work in that thing. situation? Yes. California is starting to crack down on ham radio operators. I saw that. So is that because they can't shut them off? Is that is that why they're doing it? What's what's the story behind that? I'm, I'm yeah, wondering. and you have to you have to do a little more searching. You can't don't just run with the first story you see on this kind of stuff. Um, and again, I don't want to seem like I'm going one way or the other. It's kind of, just vet your I don't sources. Want ham radio, but as soon as uh, they say I can't have one, now I got to have one. You know how that works. I, I have one. <laughs> <laughs> I've had one. I'm looking at two or three others for, for that very reason, though, because, you know, and if nothing else, disaster situations where, you know, your your cell phone goes down and stuff. Ham radio operators have, have st stood in and, and relayed information and you know, find people. Is, even if, you, if you're not going to be a ham op radio operator, if you look, there, there's some nice walkie-talkie setups out there now that can go a couple of miles. You can buy them in like a seven-pack so everybody in the family can get one. Uh, if you've got a big family, you can buy two packs as long as you get them in the same uh, hertz um, yeah. thing. And that way then you can just you keep them charged up, and they're good for a couple of miles. A lot of it depends on if you're living a, a hole in the ground or up on a hill <laughs> or something. But Yeah, the direct, the direct sign, line of sight stuff tends to, you can't have any hills in the way. You can't have but any, it does give you a chance of knowing sure else. Sure does. You, you can contact this family member he can contact that family member so yeah. you, it does give you a way to be in touch with your group at that point absolutely yeah and they are and and some of the stuff that's nice about the ham stuff is you can program them and and i'm not a ham operator yet but i there may be some legality to this but under an emergency situation some of those can be programmed so that they can actually work on the same frequencies as those 
regular walkie talkies. What is it, FRPS or whatever it is, or GRPS? I forget now. Uh, I need to go get my license. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, John, that's illegal. Eh, you know, if I can't find my family and it's an emergency situation, I, I might tend to overstep that line and break the law. But I'm looking for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking if it's a natural disaster, they probably got bigger. They got issues on their hands. They come after you. They'll do that in a couple months later. And yeah, uh, let them <laughs> let them come. I, I, it's probably a fine. If you want to put me in jail for a couple weeks, you know, I I could probably stand on my head and and do a couple days in jail. That's it's not that big a deal. <laughs> you know, I am too pretty for jail. But you know, if it, if it's a situation where I need to find my family, I'm going to do whatever the heck I need uh, to get it done. So. What can you do? Um, kind of back to the sanctuary city things. You know, if, if you're in a state, uh, you know, I, I'm located in Ohio, but you might latch onto this radio show or you might latch onto the podcast somewhere outside of Ohio. Um, there's some things, a guy named Steve Drury, who's got a rights activist who's gotten into some of these um, sanctuary cities and how to set them up and stuff. You know, some of the tips he gives out are pretty good. Uh, step one, gather your allies. You know, find out who in the legislature might be a friend or who might – um, take on that cause and go see them first. You know, talk to them maybe one on one if you can get an appointment, things like that. Spend some time with them and then see where you can take it from there. Um, <laughs> my wife texted me. She said, "You will not go to jail." That's that's why I love her because she would try to keep me out of jail. Actually, she's strong enough; she could probably bend the bars and pull me out of jail. So that's why she is. Um, step two, he says, talk act, turn activism into action. You know, keep applying that pressure. And that's what you're seeing in Virginia right now. Yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to write letters and make phone calls now than it is to live in the ditch with a cold <sighs> can of spam and 200 rounds of ammo. And that's what people are, you know, <laughs> I, I, I know a lot of these people who are, what's the, what's the key word now? Boogaloo. That's the word that everyone's using. You know, all these people are talking, ha, boogaloo. Boogaloo, my hiney, you guys. Most of us would not do well in that situation. I I like toilet paper. I like warmth. You know, I like you know, I like my zombie movies. We all look at how the last Civil War was fought, and it's not going to be nothing like that today. Today we rely on so much technology. They'll, like you say, they'll shut off the electric. They'll Absolutely. Shut off the, uh, they just stopped the truck coming to your neighborhood. All of a sudden, there's no more toilet paper, no more cheese on a stick. There's a, you, all all the stuff that you got to have. I mean, you go to Walmart on a Sunday and look how bare the shelves can be sometimes. <laughs> and that's Walmart, dude. If they can make Walmart look empty that quickly, think about what it's going to look like. As soon as it looks like there's not, there's not going to be groceries, that they'll clean it out to the to the bottom shelf. Or yeah, you shut even, off even my ATM card. Stuff will be gone. Yeah, you shut off my <laughs> ATM card, you shut off my credit cards, and let me tell you, I would be quickly to be like, what in the heck? And probably get a little cantankerous. Well, that's one thing that if, if, as a prepper, they always tell you to keep some cash in cash because it may not have a value, but to somebody who doesn't have any, they still want some. Yeah. So, so yeah, turning the activism into action. And it doesn't do you any good to have a gold bar because if somebody has a sandwich and all you got is one gold bar, what are you going to do? Trade in your gold bar for a sandwich? I would probably hit them with a gold bar and take their sandwich, you but that's just me. You had to have a, a <laughs> wad of $1 bills or something like this. They, they say to try to keep about five grand in cash and small bills. And I wish can... I could remember uh, there's a guy who, who lived in – Kosovo, I think it was, and he did a whole write-up on what was really important during times of war in Kosovo and in those areas, uh, Serbia and stuff, and nothing that you probably see on a lot of our prepper list were things that he listed that were, you know, we were like, oh, I never thought about that, and that was the reality of how they were living at that time when they couldn't get supplies and what made a difference in people's lives, so yeah, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to get that um, website and pop that up on the uh, the podcast site so you can see I what that was. For you. If you're one of them kind of people that needs to take a shower three times a day, things are going to go bad for you. <laughs> this has been the beauty of being off work all week, and everyone's <laughs> glad that I'm, you know, they're not around, they're on vacation because I probably stink. I haven't taken a shower in probably a month at this point, so it is what it is. <laughs> trying to get used to it. Ready? So that way, if I'm in a ditch eating beans, like Rob says, um, expand public awareness. That's another issue that Drury talks about. Um, you know, get out there, get your Get your story in front of the media. Social media has been a boon for people who are trying to push through. Um, before, if you just sent a press release to the local newspapers, good luck getting anything picked up. Now you've got your own, you can set up your own media company at this point. Well, the thing, too, is if not else, talk to your neighbors, talk to people, and tell them what you're thinking because they some people don't have an actual opinion, but if you're a smart guy and they trust your opinion, 
sometimes the, your opinion will be their opinion at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how many people are actually willing, if you sound somewhat intelligent and, and you lay out a good case, people are... like, well, I don't want to really put the time into it, but I, I trust him. I trust you. So <laughs> I'm going to go with what you say. And again, this, is, this goes back to the social media stuff I said. And the flip side, you guys, don't just take people's opinions 100%. <laughs> Do some research and find out. You know, you can expand your scope. This is another thing Drury talks about. Expand your scope. Just because it's happening in your area doesn't mean there aren't people also, across the country being affected. You can see it. Thing. If you buy all this prepper food that they have that's dried and MREs and all that stuff, try eating some of that stuff. That is like eating oatmeal with no water also, sometimes. If you, <laughs> if you don't ever eat any of it and then all of a sudden that's all you have to eat, things are going to go bad for you. So if yeah. you slowly introduce a little bit of that to your system, then you're not going to be quite in the distress that you'll be in if you just cold turkey into... Uh, yeah. The, the MREs have a lot of salt and stuff, so they're built for a guy who's uh, 20 years old carrying 500 pounds of crap around on his back <laughs> in the hot sun. And so they, they, they give him plenty of power, but they also have a lot of things in there that fat old people who don't move don't need. I always laugh. I see a lot of guys, even myself, I... I, I laugh at myself because i do have a i have a go bag in case you know natural disaster we gotta leave the house a gas leak or something happens we gotta leave the house and i start looking at how much the things might weigh i was like i have not rucked and how long i'm gonna slap a 100 pound pack on my back and walk 10 miles it ain't happening kids so you know you need That's to think thing, through some things like think that it, because i'm not gonna slap it on my back and do you have a bicycle? I, that, and I've thought through the bicycle thing. And, and even if you have, I mean, you say, I'm not going to ride this bicycle. I'm going to use this bicycle like a mule, and I'm going to strap my 100-pound pack on it, and I'm going to do my best to balance it as I push it down the street or down through the woods or where I'm going. And uh, it'll it'll help you if you load the bike a couple times and push it around so you get used to how much weight needs to be front, back, left, right. And that you, you get a general idea of how it goes. It also gives you a way to tie it on or what things you might need to actually fasten it to your bike. Yeah. A um, couple of rolls of duct tape might help you, but <laughs> it doesn't look too pretty. But uh. <laughs> My wife and I were in, I uh, was at L.L. Bean the other day, and I was laughing because they had the, uh, the little carriers for the dogs, like, you know, so that when you have your dog out in the wilderness with it, you can put supplies in the dog. There's a little thing that goes that cinches to him. And we've got a chihuahua and we've got a husky. And I said, I'm getting one for the chihuahua. She's like, what are you going to put in that? She's like, that's not what that's for. I said, that is exactly what that is for. So you can put supplies on your dog. Now, most likely it's dog food and stuff. But it made me laugh thinking about all the MREs I could stuff on my chihuahua and make him carry it for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just some different things to think through. Uh, and guys, I didn't mean this to be a prepper show tonight, but there are things that you probably have to think through a little bit. Um, and you like know, I say, write letters, make some phone calls. It's a lot easier to, to counteract it now than it is after it happens. Absolutely, and, and you're seeing that in Virginia because they they waited, they didn't vote, and now they're having to push back. And I I am so thrilled to see them pushing back um, because I believe this is a a national. Uh, well, I call this. This is a test run, quite frankly. They, I, I, I truly believe that Bloomberg dumped his money into Virginia um, to see what this would look like. Um, and I, I don't, I can't prove this. I don't know that they didn't do this to test this in the NRA's backyard with them being a little bit weakened um, to see what would happen. So I really think this is a test run for a, a, a cross country type situation and presidential runs. You know, can you get away with it in one state? Maybe. Um, if you get away with it in one state, how easy would it be for you to do it in another state? And people will look and say, it happened in Virginia. It didn't hurt them. What about us? So, again, I'm not that guy, that the conspiracy theorist, too far. But just be careful, watch, and keep vigilant. That's all. So. All right, so some other things I wanted to get to tonight besides Virginia, um, because it does keep on giving. I wanted to talk a little bit about active shooters. This is kind of a, a topic. You know, you've seen this quite a bit lately. Um, there's probably been, I don't know, three or four within the last six months or so. And the two of the bigger ones were at, at naval bases. Um, I won't get into the whole, hey, it's a naval base. Why weren't people armed? That's a whole different, uh, it's a whole nother topic. I won't touch on that tonight. But there are things that you need to think about if you are in a situation where you end up as an active shooter participant, I not got, by choice. I get questions. Why, why don't we hear anything about the Hawaii version of the thing. We're only hearing about the Pensacola one. The Hawaii one disappeared, didn't it? it right. They, were, it, it, they said this would happen, and then the next day, no more news. 
And I don't know if it was because there was only, what, two people killed in that? Two plus the, did the guy commit suicide in that one? It's still a, why, why aren't we hearing about who the shooter was, what, what kind of weapon he used, why, what he had in mind? Because we usually stuff. get all that. You know, we at least get the, oh, here's the evil Glock. I think we're all, uh, I think they're, they're hiding something from us. But then again, that's just me. I'm, <laughs> I, and who knows, Rob? I'm actually suspicious. Yeah, and the other one got way more play, and I, I don't know if it was because more people were killed. Um, but there are things you can do, you know, ahead of time. You know, I'm, I'm reading some of these stats, and one of the stats that was really disturbing to me was people had identified some of these shooters as somebody who had issues. They've acted out. They've done stuff. 41% of people did not report that there was an issue. Even if you do report it, usually nothing happens. And that's a problem too, Rob. You're right, because people mean, look at it and there's, there's really say, not much they can act on. As much as they say, see something, say, say something. Say something, yeah. Nothing really happens. And, I mean, I've had things where I've contacted national law enforcement and it's almost like you got to beg them for a week before they even send somebody out to talk to you about it. And Snitches get stitches, too. You always hear that one. You know, people people don't want to rat people out. We're, we're good people, and we've been, since we were little kids, hey, don't rat me out. And that's always been a thing, you know, in certain cultures, too. That's a that's a huge thing. You don't rat people out. But I mean, I, I got no problem. Uh, you, just, you, you ain't nothing to me but an ultimate food <laughs> source. <laughs> yeah, I, and guys, and, you know, some people are into red flag laws and stuff. This is a way to do stuff that, that's not red flaggish. You know, just let people know. You know, even if you tell your coworkers, like, hey, kind of keep an eye on this. I'm a little concerned about this. Um, and, and one of the higher statistics is it happens in workplaces. So, you know, I was probably always a crazy gun guy, but anytime somebody needs something in the office, I was the first guy they ran to. <laughs> like, hey, John, you got a knife? Yeah. Hey, John, can you take a look at this guy? He's downstairs. Yeah. Um, so those are the type of things you want to do. If there's somebody downstairs that looks out of place at your office, have somebody go take a look. Call the police. They're there for that reason. Let them come take a look. Uh, you don't know that, that, you know, and I'm going to probably get slapped again. I believe in profiling. What? And I don't necessarily mean that as a racial profile, you guys. I mean that in a way of socioeconomic even. If the guy makes your hair stand on Bingo. and you need to check into what, what's Bingo. going on with it because something prime, primeval inside of your psyche says that that guy is a creepy. <laughs> you, will, you will know this, you guys. You're, you're, and Rob hit it. If your hair stands up on the back of your head or on your arms... There's a reason it does that. You know, go read the, the Gift of Fear by Gavin DeBecker. That is probably one of the best books out there that talks about, hey, there are certain things we ignore. And we ignore up to four or five things before somebody attacks us. And that's, that's bad news, especially if this person turns into an active shooter, an active killer in your, in your work environment, your school environment. If you didn't act or you didn't say something, that's on you. I know it, it, it sounds crappy, but, yeah, that's kind Going of on you. to your concealed carry thing after... Uh... 15 years, now's the time to do it. Um, <laughs> remember, you're your own first responder. You better believe it. That's the, that <laughs> you are at, when Rob when hit somebody's that. somebody's beating you in the head with a pipe, guess what? It's a couple minutes for the police to get there is too long. So one of the, one of the, <laughs> another stat that I, you know, as I'm doing the research on this, 10 to 15 minutes before first response. That is a long time to be trapped yeah. somewhere with somebody killing people. And like I say, I, uh. I train a lot on you know, all different types of things, and there's no there's no training you can do for the the first guy in the in the situation. A lot of times, no, nobody knows how, anything's happening until the first guy gets whacked, and that guy was uh, just doing his own thing, minding his own business, and this is where evil struck. And so it, he could be the most prepared person on the planet and be the first guy to be shot or killed in a you absolutely incident. can i know people talk about the color codes and they're always up and they're always right re- listen you guys you, your your spouse is going to be yelling at you there's going to be something going on around you um and honestly most of us react when we hear a loud noise oh is that a balloon so the right. more research you do on this the more i'm reading people that was their first response was that if a construction it, noise if it sounds like a gunshot treat it like a gunshot my it, wife is yes. very um aware of her surroundings so a lot of times, even I won't notice something, but she'll be pounding on the back of my head because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. I would say, you guys, that is probably one of the biggest things that everyone needs to switch with their thought processes and their their um, readiness. Is if you hear a sound, 
do not push that sound off. Do not take that sound as a, oh, that's just probably something else. The worst thing is you start moving towards an exit and you go, oh, that was somebody just dropped something. Okay, so you move back to your shopping or whatever you were doing or you can move back to studying or whatever you're doing. The, treat a loud noise like a potential threat. Here's the other thing. If it's not a gunshot, what if it is somebody who is knocking things over you know the as they too, get agitated and they're ramping up? Mike has a show before. This one, he was working in an office building up in Cleveland. It's three, three floors high. And they were shooting full power 308 rounds in, on the main floor, and a, and you could not hear them on the second floor. That's that's the way the office building is laid out. It muffled the sound so much that. Uh, yeah, I, I actually just read something on that today, Rob. You're absolutely right. Again, as I keep doing research on this, people like run towards the gunshots or run away from the gunshots. A, if you hear them, it's a miracle. Um, B, you can't always tell where they're coming from, especially in an office or a school. Um, and how many of you are doing stuff with headphones on? I know it, it breaks up some of the monotony, um, but if you got your headphones on and you even think you hear a loud noise again, pop the headphones out. Even if pop them out of one ear, you know, if you're not that person, yeah, like, yeah. they always tell you to just wear one so you can hear what's going on with the other. Absolutely, like if I if I run, which is a rare occasion. <laughs> and I have headphones on. It is in one ear. If I'm working out, and I, I don't usually wear headphones when I work out, um, I usually have them in one ear for that very reason. You know, That's funny. If, if I run, if, oh, if I run, listen, you better be if, running right if, along. Rob, with me. Yes, if I am running, you guys, you better be sure. I'm like that shirt that the, for the bomb text that says, "If you see me run, follow me quickly." Um, yeah, because if I'm running, either something's chasing me or something has gone horribly wrong. That's about the only reasons I'm running these days. Um, really should get back to it. So, the, what's the zombie land <laughs> rule one? Cardio, right? So I need to get back to my cardio, um, as we talked about before. So yeah. Guys, I want to spend some more time on the active shooter thing, and I'll do this more next week because there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. Um, and as Rob says, you cannot 100% prepare yourself for an active shooter. You could be the most aware human being, and if they get to jump on you and they whack you in the back of the head, you're done. Um, but there are some things you can do. There's some things that people do. Um, there are signs that you can see, and, and pay attention to those things, the people around you. If people are distressed, Especially right now around the holidays, pay attention. Even if they don't end up being active shooters, you could just be a, an ear for somebody. You can be, you know, um, that friend that they need in that moment. Um, you know, a lot of people really struggle this time of year. Just be nice. You know, I know a lot of people get in a rush and they're just turds sometimes when they're running around um, at the holidays. Be nice. Don't be the person that don't add to it. Don't. Um, don't be the person that, that ramps it up for somebody else. Um, be, a, be an open ear and listen a little bit. Um, so our friends over at Homeland Security, they've done some things about recognizing potential workplace violence. This is one of the places I see our tax dollars going to good work, so it's kind of nice. Um, you know, some things that may trigger people to be active shooters, especially in a workplace, former employees, um, yeah, anyone who's had a disgruntled employee, they're, they're prime. A lot of these things are disgruntled employees, and they come back and they target people who they were angry at, and then they go on to keep shooting other people who have no affiliation to them whatsoever. Um, you know, if you're an intuitive manager or coworker, you may notice some characteristics of um, violent behavior. You know, talk to human, if no one else, talk to human resources. Give them a heads up. They can deal with it. If you don't want to deal with it head on, <laughs> go talk to them. Absolutely. Um, most employees, I know you hear this, oh, he just snapped. Nope. There were signs. There were some things that they were doing. They were acting out. Um, people tend not to snap. Um, you know, a lot of times this stuff can be treated or, or cut off at the, at the thing. You know, if you have people you're working with and all of a sudden they're increasing alcohol use or drug use and you see that, that's a sign sometimes. Um, Sometimes increase absenteeism. Now, I know sometimes our jobs just suck. <laughs> but if, you, if you've got this person acting out and they're drinking a lot and they suddenly don't start showing up or they start talking about things that might seem violent. Now, again, don't take this as – don't go too far the other way. Don't run out and be like, oh, he talked about going out hunting this weekend and, oh, he's going to kill everyone in the office. No, that's not – tends to be um, uh, why. Uh, you know, noticeable decrease in attention to appearance and hygiene, um, depression, withdrawal, um, resistance and overreaction to changes in policies and procedures. Now I'll be the first one to tell you I will push back on policy and procedure, but I'm not going to be the guy that's going to snap either. So so a lot of good stuff in here, you guys. Um, we're about to the end of the show for the nights. These hours are going fast, Rob. It's, when we're having fun, they go quickly, <laughs> don't they? So a lot of great information. I will pick this back up next week. Um, so be back here. Uh, 8 o'clock next week, protect you. 
uh, who knows if Rob will be here. <laughs> he, he's, he continues to hang out, and thank God because he's a lot of fun. Uh, but remember, this stuff kicks off at around 4 o'clock on Monday. It actually goes from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m., but you got Rob and Amanda from 4 to 6, Mike on the mic from 6 to 8, and me from 8 to 9. So everyone have a great week. Have a great Christmas. God bless you, and thank you.